Hello, this is the Answer Lady with help for new Singer or Studio Machine Knitters. Those brands are basically the same, and they all models have a great deal in common. So even if you are not knitting on the 150, which is what I'm going to show you on, a great deal of this information will be useful to you. Happy knitting! This is a Studio 150 knitting machine. It's exactly the same as a Singer. Also, Impiesel and Knitmaster, they were just different brands used to describe the machines that were fundamentally the same. The handle may arrive like that. You just pop it into place. And I should tell you that all Studio and Singer machines have a great deal in common, although each model has interesting features. Here's our row counter. The big holes are going to align with these screws. So we'll put the big holes right over those screws. Whoops, frontwards would be good. And when I feel it in there, press and push back, down and back, and it aligns. This advances the row counter. If you want to manually set it, you do this. This triggers the row counter. Left. There we go. If you don't want it to count for some reason, flip it back and it'll just pass. This is not a row counter trigger. On the sides, you've got a what looks like a minus sign and an equal sign. We'll call them setting one and setting two for one line versus two lines. On setting one, needles that are brought out forward to what is called hold, don't knit. They don't do anything. On setting two, they knit normally. This is the usual position that we knit in. You can watch the needles come to and fro because I haven't yet put on the sinker plate, which is this. There's your yarn feeder, and the yarn normally goes right in there. It slides in the front and pops into place. On the bottom side of the yarn feeder, I mean not on the yarn feeder, the sinker plate, are wheels and brushes. The plastic cover on this brush is in poor shape. I'm going to need to replace it soon. You have to examine these pretty often and pull fuzz out. If it gets wrapped around there, it impacts their usefulness. And their job is to push the yarn down and keep it behaving well. To attach this to the carriage, it slides onto these two screw posts. We normally don't remove these thumb screws all the way, though you can. And if you do, that's all you're left with. If you lose or break these, they're replaceable. There are some purveyors that carry them. There we go. There are two little stops here and here that help align the carriage perfectly. I go back and forth. Don't tighten one side down all the way because it tends to misalign the carriage. And because I did this one-handed, I can feel it's a little bit misaligned right now. It just doesn't set quite as it should. There we go. Did you see that stub come more up to fill that hole? I don't know if you could, but you'll get used to it. And if you have it a little bit wrong, it may knit for a while and then it may drop the work off the machine. So you don't want that. Here is our stitch size dial. Some people call this tension, though I am not one of them. I refer to what goes on in the mast as tension. 10 is a big stitch, 0 is a really little stitch, and most of our work on this machine will be done on number 4 or worsted weight yarns, usually between stitch size 4 and 7. Now, there is a slip stitch setting. This is the normal stock in it setting, the S is for slip. Watch what happens if I select some of the needles to slip. Everything pulled back, but you would need uh, fabric on the machine to see that in slip stitch only some needles actually knitted. A bar of yarn went across the others. 
let's look at the eye setting, which is for intarsia. It's kind of unusual to have a built-in eye. See where the needles come out? This makes it easier for you to lay, say, white yarn over those needles, black yarn over those, white yarn over those. You have to work with the um, latches open, and they're supposed to automatically pop open, but you always check. And then these yarns are just hanging loosely. And if I were to knit across, it would be knitting in a design. Intarsia is a big knitted in design, usually not like fair isle which might be two or three stitches and you manually select the needles that will hold whichever color it doesn't matter how many colors you use in the row it's a lot of fun it can be tedious but it's great for picture knitting this is your tensioning device it's likely to be clipped into the carriage i mean into the case in two pieces with this folded up this is a yarn guide and mine is bent off camera. I'll straighten it out. It's not a big deal. You flip it into position so as to be able to use it. It's usually received folded down next to the rod and we'll want to flip it out. On this end, this needs to stick into that little hole. I'm going to have to do that off camera. I don't think I can do it one hand. But you can see now that it's in there. The other end of the rod goes into that receptacle. The little wings go side to side, so it can only go in one way, but you could get it in exactly backwards. Your yarn guide needs to be the back to the back and your tensioning portion towards the front with the bug heads <laughs> towards you. Here is what I call the tension. Number one is very tight. Number two is very loose. This is much like the tensioning device on a sewing machine. The yarn passes through here. And if you have trouble with it, look for fuzz caught in it and get it out. And the yarn must be clipped firmly into that spot. That's correct. And then, of course, the loose end comes up, goes through that clip and down to the yarn feeder here it's correctly threaded now before you go let me apologize this machine is ready for a deep cleaning and besides being old which we don't hold against anybody it's pretty dirty but i wanted to get this ready to show you before i take several hours to um, clean it so Please forgive the dirtiness and enjoy your Singer Studio knitting machine.